I have been playing MMOs since the early 2000s, so it's been a minute. And while I still like some of the other MMOs, I'm still playing them, I kind of feel like they get a little dry at times. I feel like I need something fresh, something new. Do I always look that bored when I play video games? Well, I got invited by a friend to play Terrace Land. Tar Taris Land? Terrace Land. I don't know. I had never heard of it. But just judging from the web page, it looks ri- Wait, wait a minute. What was that? Is that- does that say you can play this on a phone? It's a mobile game? Oh, man, I was so excited. I was looking forward to having a new MMO to play, and here it is, a mobile game. I'm sure you don't get to do anything. It just auto plays for you. Well, I downloaded it anyways. So you don't have to. I downloaded the game, and I got to the character creation screen. And I was super impressed by the animations they showed when you first click on the classes. So picking a character is fun anyways because you get this awesome screen. So they also give you a preview here showing what your end game gear is going to look like for that class. So that was kind of a neat little feature they added. I settled on a Phantom Necro for my character. I'm kind of going through some of the character creation tools that you have. There's about eight or so heads that you can choose from. Some different eyebrow colors, hair colors, skin colors, uh, eyebrow type. Uh, not a ton of variations. When it was all said and done though, I was happy with how she looked and meet our Phantom Necro, War Pigs Necro. I gotta stay on brand. Something of note, if you don't want story spoilers, especially for the beginning of this game, go ahead, skip over this video, that way uh, it won't be spoiled for you. No, really. Go away. Why are you still here? All right. Now that they're gone, let's jump right in. Use basic attacks to attack. Starting the game, I was immediately thrown into combat. I decimated my enemies and tore them asunder only to realize there were bigger and badder enemies just around the corner. These beasts too fell with every swing of my giant uh, staff, lantern thingy. I defeated this giant, uh, uh, well, Void General before meeting Catherine and shortly after that we get to fight a dragon the game is now showing off two of what I think are some of the greatest practical features that I've seen in an MMO first in the top right corner you can see there's actually a DPS meter and it's built in you can also show healing done, healing per second, damage done, and damage per second. Secondly, 
The game has a built-in dungeon and raid boss mod. Basically, like what you download for any other MMO that would tell you like, hey, get out of the fire, stupid, or watch out for the circle on the ground. Basically, it tells you what you need to do in fights. The other thing I want to point out is this is five minutes into the tutorial. You're already in a 10-man raid group, and you're fighting a giant dragon with real raid mechanics, with adds that you have to kill and watch out for and do things to, attacks you have to avoid. And we're just starting the game. Man, that dragon fight was awesome. I don't know any other MMO that has a huge fight that feels, well, like a big fight that matters. D did I mention we're still in the tutorial? This is the first thing that really blew me away and made me start to wonder, is this game worth playing? Maybe, maybe I was changing my mind. So this is our first steps into the actual game, outside of the tutorial. They've shown us this rock, this gem thing, called the Inscribed Stone. Of course, I pass out because every hero has to do that when they find their, you know, magical item that they're supposed to have. This character, Jaya, is kind of our guide. She's gonna get us from where we are now to where we need to be. Making it out onto this hill, we can kind of get a lay of the land, terrace land, you might say. And then uh, we discover that there's this giant tower here that's apparently right in our way, and somehow we need to just go around it. This is where we meet Lorne. He's a ranking member of the Ancash tribe, and they're led by the Tata chieftain. No, I'm not joking. So anyways, we helped them fight some centaurs. We talked to the chieftain. Yada, 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 some story goes on. We get some wolves killed. We steal their hearts because, you know, that's what they want here at the tribe. It does look like your inscribed the stone. chief gives me their sacred stone. Of course, my inscribed stone is some sort of a magic magnet and absorbs it. The whole village is attacked by a pack of roving gnolls. Of course, we defeat them. Praise the spirit of nature. You are getting better and better. Then we get to meet the chief's son, Moon. Yeah, not joking, his name's Moon. Um, anyways, we kind of interrupted some sort of weird conversation where he's saying you've healed really well. The tower activates gets all tentacly and then moon just drops dead like a zombie but without the undead part and with alcohol i guess no i'm, I'm not joking jay actually says he's like a drunk zombie he's as good as a drunk zombie now of course the chieftain chief tata <laughs> ah anyways it's chief tata <laughs> <a> <laughs> This, this is never not going to be funny. Uh, he sends us to go check out the uh, the tower that's all activated and scary and stuff with tentacles and whatnot. And uh, we end up finding Lorne, our Minotaur friend, hanging out on a cliff, ready to storm the Wailing Ca- uh, I'm sorry, the Dim Caverns, which is totally not Wailing Caverns. It's, it's totally not, you know, the first dungeon in an MMO where you get to, you know, go from where, you know, the Minotaur-like people are. Anyways, just like that, I'm inside Wailing Ca- I mean, Dim Cavern, uh, with Pikachu? Keep moving. Once we're inside the dungeon actually playing, we end up fighting off some demon spiders, because regular spiders apparently aren't scary enough. In a large cavern, we find Chief Tata. <laughs> uh, and uh, Moon, his son. His, his son's dead, drunk, zombie body. Apparently, he made a deal with a deity of some sort to resurrect his son and 
It's going flawlessly. Obviously, it's going to work out just the way he wants it to. Father. No. No. Not like this. Father. 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 This is not what I was promised. I only want my moon back. Anywho, we fight off the spirit clones, and then Lord frees us from some sticky webbing, and we proceed to fight the giant spider demon queen, which was a pretty neat fight. Dodge poisons, squish little spiders, punch the giant spider queen in the throat. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Whoa, whoa, settle down, tower. That's a good tower, good boy. Chief Tata makes some factually correct statements. For now. Ooh, the a level, yeah. With proper hand. The game continues and shows exactly how to locate your talents, how to upgrade your talents, how to upgrade your abilities. It shows you the two specs or specializations you have, which each class has two, usually a damage dealer and a tank, a damage dealer and a heals, or two damage specs. Mine happens to have heals and damage. And now we're gonna get into the part that is going to deter a lot of people. Job. At least they think it will. Bear with me, Select the rhino just hang on. Purchase. This is the reputation shop. Yep, yeah, I know, I know. It's a mobile game. Mobile games means spending money to get currencies, to be able to spend them on items, to get a boost or a boon, and to be able to be a better player in the game. And if you don't spend money, then you're not gonna be as good as everybody else. But what I have found through my research, which of course is just Googling at home and asking one person. But anyways, through my research, I found that all of the items, all of the currencies that are in this game, you can get using either your silver coin currency, which is what you get just from fighting and looting and doing quests, or you have special quests and dailies that give you all of those other currencies. Granted, it's slower than if you just put in your credit card number and uh, say buy thousands of coins and donate them to Warpix Panda. I mean, totally up to you. You don't have to do that. I'm just saying, I mean, it could happen, but... You can do that. You can earn it all in game. And that's amazing because now you don't have to be stuck behind a cash shop. So the game's completely free. You get to play for free. And if you want to get anything in the cash shop, you can get it just by playing the game. What a novel concept. So with the chief abandoning his tribe and the chief's the son dead and... Lauren basically left in control and to take care of his tribe. He did what any good leader would do and left. That's right. He's out of there. He's going to Silverlit City with me. Because I'm awesome. What's wrong? So now we've arrived here at... Hey! That's mine! Stupid seagull. Took my inscribed stone. Can't you tell they're toying with us? Yes, I can tell. Who has a trained seagull or falcon or whatever it is that's trained to steal people's stuff? Wait, isn't that Catherine? Didn't we help her like way back at the beginning fight the dragon? And this is how she thanks me? She steals my things? Well, guess I'm gonna have to kill her. So this is really just a way for them to show in the game that there is PvP, you can duel, and I guess this is their way of doing it, showing that you can attack an allied NPC, even though you can't do that any other time during the game. But we royally beat her, she gives us a stone back, and all's right in the world. The end. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. I'll give you some thoughts, actually. This is honestly a fantastic game. When I first read about it, I basically looked at the website. I thought, man, this is gonna be a great game. And then legitimately I looked and saw it was for Android and uh, Apple operating systems. And that really threw me off. I was really disappointed because it looked so great. And I knew immediately it's gonna have auto walking. It's gonna have auto fighting. You're not gonna be doing any of your thing. Just like the typical MMO on a phone, but it's not. This looks and feels and plays like an MMO that you would play on your PC. This this feels like 
It doesn't feel like another game. I can't say it feels like World of Warcraft, or it feels like Guild Wars 2, or it feels like Wildstar, or it feels like, you know, fill in the blank, Final Fantasy. It doesn't. It feels like its own thing, but it feels like a game that's made for the PC. You can do dungeons, you can do raids, there's guilds, there's daily quests, there's crafting, there's all sorts of things. And I've only scratched the surface. There's pets to collect, mounts to find, and buy, and trade, I guess. I don't know, maybe steal. I could try stealing one. I think I could. But I'm getting sidetracked. This game is, is great. So, like any good MMO player, the next thing I did was... Completely ignore the character I just spent all that time on, and I made a bard. Because why kill things as a phantom necro by sucking their soul out when instead you can play music? If you enjoyed this video, this first impressions take on my first few hours in Terrace Land, let me know. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and comment. Let me know what class are you playing, and I will see you on the next video.